by DQ and uh, JYD was not so thrilled after the match, but I don't know that much happened um, after that with, with those guys. So um, Rude wins by DQ, which was just kind of there to further the angle with JYD, uh, excuse me, with Jake Roberts. So um, I give it like a, like a, a star, about one I give whole star. One single star for Rick Rude and the pre-match um, hype, if you will. Was mm-hmm. this, uh, my, my timeline's a little bit off. Was this before JYD helped Sting or was this after Sting? Um, I don't, do you know, I don't remember what year that was. Oh, well, actually the champions, I don't remember. Cause I was, cause when JYD showed up to help Sting, he was in the audience. I, I could already tell you Googling. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, John Carrot Dog was very over in the mid South and in the South. So I don't know if he had the same effect up here in uh, New York. It looks like he debuted in the NWA world championship wrestling in December of 88 so this was before three months before okay he went there yeah all right so yeah four months before so i I think he was you know they were used to him in mid-south and in georgia and he had a better presence there because he really didn't do much in the wwe so yeah i went uh one star on this as well next up we had the powers of pain versus the bolsheviks it was uh nikolai volkov and uh boris zukov boris zukov thank you very much um it was an elongated squash match to me but it served its purpose um the the only problem is for as over as the powers of pain were the bolsheviks they really didn't have much heat um but powers of pain got their moves in and it was harmless to me yeah i guess yeah, I, I guess like you said it was really more as a um there to showcase powers of pain um bolsheviks were not very good in ring wrestlers, at least in my opinion, um, Nikolai was a stud, man. Ah, oh, he was—he was not good, man. The he's bumps still, that he takes is like he's taking like still, rolls. He still wrestles. That's upsetting. He needs to stop. If unless he's taking flat back bumps, because he's not taking any of those in this match in 1988. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it? Did you watch? If you watch it, he doesn't take. Bu- he just rolls. He, he, he rolls. He like over. falls on his side. You're right. Yeah, right no good. He rolls. Maybe he was it's hurt. just sloppy, dude. He would not get through the performance center today. I'll tell you that. But yeah, I gave it like a star. It's this. You know, the only thing I guess about it too with the powers of pain is that they they were baby faces at this point. And then I think it's survivor series uh, a few months later, they did the double turn and turn heel. So I guess I don't know if they felt like they weren't getting over as baby faces. I seemed like the crowd was kind of into them here. It was a New York crowd, but uh, only three short months later they were, they were turning heel. So um, as much as this match was served a purpose to try to get them over more, it didn't really in the long run, didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. I actually gave it two stars. I liked it. And I like to me, if the crowd's into the match, I'm more into the match. So I went two stars on that one. Next up is uh, what it, pretty much what everybody remembers of SummerSlam 1988. The longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, the Honky Tonk Man versus question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, the Ultimate Warrior was the surprise. And that, man, that blew the roof off of the place. His reaction was unbelievable. Yeah, people were, uh, I, you know, I think the, the storyline going into the show was that Brutus the Barber Beefcake was slated to get an Intercontinental Championship ETF shot. Uh, it's him. And uh, a pretty scary angle for when we were kids, at least for, for me, was uh, Ron Bass cutting his head open with a spur, I believe, uh, on television. And Beefcake was unable to wrestle in this match. So there was an opponent that was to be determined. Um, Honky did not want to know who his opponent was until he got to the ring. And sure enough, it was the ultimate warrior kind of took him by surprise and, uh, just gave him a couple of moves and beat him in about 30 seconds after the bell rang and the crowd went nuts. Gave him the worst clothesline I've ever seen in my entire life. And that Ron Bass angle, I think one of my favorite parts and it literally scared the hell out of me was when they actually put the black bar over his face and said censored. Mm Mm-hmm. I had no idea what was going on, man. It reminded me of the um, Dusty Rhodes Road Warriors angle when they uh, got him in the eye with a spike. Good stuff back yeah, then. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hardcore for, for a WWF angle, I think, at that time. I mean, there's there's a couple of times that they did stuff like that, um, that when you look back at it now, it's like, well, he cut his head open with a spur on live TV or um, a snake bit, Jake <laughs> Macho Man's arm, and uh, or somebody locked the Ultimate Warrior in a casket. Now, things like that happen, but... Um, so every once in a while, I guess they kind of, uh, Brick killed the guy, <laughs> a little crazy stuff happened, but, um, yeah, the upshot of it was the ultimate warrior won the intercontinental title. And, 
Um, that started a pretty, a pretty big, I think, mega push for him um, over the next like two years, where he was you know vaulted into the you know as a main event guy. So uh, this was kind of the start of it for for him. And people can say what they want about the Ultimate Warrior. In hindsight, you talk about him, you know, the guy he's he passed away now um, two years ago. Say what you want about him, but that character and that gimmick would not have gotten over with anybody else but him. His energy, his insane promos, his physique, and everything. He was not good in the ring, but he was still my favorite growing up as a kid. Um, and that's because of who Jim Helwig, the Ultimate Warrior, was as a person. So I think he was the, you know, lightning in a bottle, the right guy for the right spot. And he did a lot with that, you know, with a very limited moveset and limited skill. Yeah, he did. I mean, and he had a, he had a few good matches in, in his time there. I mean, I don't, you know. Um, next, well, ne- we'll talk about SummerSlam 89, you know, next episode. And that's, uh, to me, one of his best matches of all time. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, so that's one of the, probably one of, if not the most memorable moment from this show is uh, him winning the Intercontinental title in about 30 seconds. No stars. Zero stars. It's hard to, hard to rate it. Hard to rate it. But it was a cool angle. Yeah, totally in for the angle. Speaking of zero stars, next up was uh, Dino Bravo versus Don Morocco, which was a rematch from WrestleMania 4, which sucked really, really, really bad. So why not put it on a card six months later that already has 12 matches on it? Uh, It was bad. It stunk. Um, I got nothing else for you. Yeah, no, it really wasn't that good. I mean, Morocco was kind of, I think, at the end of his run. Um, here, I, you know, again, he'd been wrestling for a long time. He was pretty big, pretty big dude. So I don't think uh, there was much going on here. They're probably trying to just get Dino Bravo over as a strong man, but he was also not necessarily the best of workers. So, um, there's really not much to this match at all. Just, you know, Dino Bravo won with a side slam and, and that's, that's about it. So um, I gave it one star. What'd you give it? Yeah, it's probably like half a star or something like that. Well, I had it at half a star, but Frenchie Martin's USA is not okay sign propelled me to give another half a star because I chuckled at it. So, Okay, I'll give you that. Um, Finally, wrestling match on the card. Next up, Tag Team Champions Demolition against the Hart Foundation. They had a lot, a lot, lot of matches between 87, 88, and 90, and I have yet to see a bad one. Yeah, it was good. I was a little surprised that the Hearts got no introduction um, or no entrance, rather, until they were in, in the ring to my right, I believe, was was their introduction. So, they had just dumped Jimmy Hart, correct? Yeah, so the Jimmy Hart had come out with Demolition and Mr. Fuji um, because they had dumped Jimmy Hart, but Jimmy Hart still owned their contracts or some weirdness. But uh, that, of course, played into the finish uh, of the match with uh, the megaphone and all that stuff. But, yeah, they, they had a good match. Uh I gave it probably about three stars. The crowd was into it uh, at the end with some near falls. But uh, in the end, Demolition retained the tag titles. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I thought it was a good match as far as probably in-ring stuff was concerned. It was probably the best match on the show. Agreed. Uh, three and a quarter from this guy over here. Um, Hart Foundation, what I liked about them is, they, you know, they always say Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, their careers kind of parallel each other. You know, the Rockers were a thing. The Hart Foundation were a thing. The Rockers were two guys doing high-flying moves. Where Hart Foundation was, was a little bit different. It was Brett, who was more technical, and um, the Anvil, who was a lot more power. So they had some cool, innovative tag team moves um, together. There was one spot where Brett slingshotted um, Anvil over the top rope to the outside. I that was really cool for the for the time. And then also... Angel kind of has bred up in a reverse body slam and power slams him on top of uh, Smash. So it was some really cool stuff there. And the uh, finish came with a megaphone to the back of the head and demolition retained. So I went three and a quarter on that. Yep, that's fair. That's fair. So then uh, looks like next is a, another kind of a showcase match for the Big Boss Man, right? Big Boss Man versus Coco Beware. I uh, you, this is crazy. I kind of like this match. Um, the crowd was into Coco Beware, which I think is really cool. Um, he, The crowd popped for him. They liked the entrance with Frankie, who, rest in peace, uh, very sad story. How do you want to talk about it? It's going to get me a little choked up. Uh, what I noticed about the boss man, though, that dude was heavy here. He was weighing probably 340, 350. Probably as heavy as I've ever seen him. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I think in the beginning, he, that's that's how he was. He was uh, a little bigger than he was later on. But, uh, you know, like he, when he was in the Twin Towers or that that era, right? And then he slimmed down a little bit and uh, started having, you know, a 
pretty good stretch of matches, I think, once he did. Um, but I think this was a spot to try to, you know, Coco is a guy that I think they put in the put him in the ring with others to make them look good because um, he that was kind of his thing. And, uh, you know, he did that here. I think, you know, boss, like you said, the crowd was kind of into it. Um, you know, boss man was getting a push. Uh, I think I gave it about like two stars, maybe. I went also exactly two stars. And I think Coco Beware, he wasn't – he – was a shorter dude. He was very, he was thick too. He was a stocky guy, but he had some good high flying moves. He had a great missile drop kick off the top rope um, that really got the crowd going. I think he was an underrated, you know, he was an underrated worker for his time, but uh, I like Coco. And I, and I thought the match was good for what like I said, for what it was. And I went two stars too. Um, yeah. Another man, there's so many weird singles matches on the show. Uh, Hercules versus Jake, the snake Roberts. No Bobby Heenan with Hercules, which was a little conspicuous by his absence, but they played it off as, you know, Bobby's with the uh, Mega Bucks. You know, it's got to prepare his guys. I thought it was a. Uh, I wrote down here my notes: paint by numbers, face versus heel, WWF '80s match. Yeah, I remember this match being really boring um, in various spots. Uh, so it was not not my favorite. Um, again, but there's there's unfortunately there's several matches like that on this show. Um, this one went about 10 minutes, Jake Roberts won, which was cool. So I think I gave it like one, one, one and a half stars. I'm going to say, um, I'm a big mark for the Jake Roberts DDT, but yeah, uh, that's the reason I also gave it a star and a half and I gave it a star and a half because of the DDT and the crowd's reaction to the DDT. Yeah. But it's, I mean, if you look at the formula so far of the show, right, it's like start off with a hot match. Bulldogs and Rougeos slow it down for two matches. Hot match, Warrior versus Hockey Talk Man, slow it down, Dino Bravo. Hot tag match, slow it down with Boss Man and Coco, and then Hercules versus Jake. So it's kind of like you're literally taking the crowd on, you know. And that, to in this day and age, uh, that wouldn't work. You know, I, I feel like you would lose the crowd. Kind of like I feel like they lost the crowd at Extreme Rules when they put on the Iron Man match last. Um I feel like it's it's sometimes it's too much to sit through. Luckily, at this time, Hogan and Macho Man and Ted DiBiase and Andre, you know they they were too popular to lose the crowd. So uh, that, so you main event Hogan and Macho Mega Powers versus Mega Bucks. I believe this is the first time they wore matching tights. True or false? <laughs> first time I can remember them wearing matching tights. Yes, and um, Jesse Ventura was appointed as the special guest referee which is kind of an interesting thing. I mean, they were kind of teasing, like, you know, well, he took money from, from DiBiase or something like that. But, I mean, he's he was a heel anyway, right? So, I mean, why, why wouldn't he do that? Um, but, uh, you know, the upshot of that whole aspect was just, you know, whether he would count the pin uh, should the baby faces, you know, win or be in a position to do so, um, which he ended up kind of forcefully having to count three uh, at the end of the match. But, but yeah, I mean, um, uh, DiBiase and the Giant had – Bobby Heenan and Virgil with them and um, Savage and Hogan had Miss Elizabeth with them and uh, Ventura was a special referee. So there's a lot going on here, but I thought the match was, was good. It was good for what it was. Like you said, there's a lot of popular uh, folks in this match, big names, Hogan, Andre, Savage, you know, DiBiase was a hot heel around this time. And I thought they had a solid match. It was, you know, the ending um, was, you know, a, a distraction by Miss Elizabeth. Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, let's not gloss over the distraction. The woman yeah. took her pants off, Joe. She took her skirt off. Yeah. She was wearing a bikini bottom, I believe. Was, bikini bottoms. There's a lot going on in 1988, man. That was that was. All right. I just want to make sure you know. Go go ahead, and talk about the finish of the match, but I just want to let everybody know. No, yeah, that was that was you know towards the end, and um, it caused a distraction of DiBiase and Andre, and uh, Mega Powers took over, and I, I believe the end was uh, you know DiBiase getting pinned. I can't remember if it was the elbow or the leg drop that got him last, it was- but. The Savage Elbow, and then Hogan finished up with the leg drop. So, yeah. yeah, so that was it. Um, and that was the that was the tag team main event of the first SummerSlam. And I think there's, I think at the end, there was, you know, they were celebrating with Elizabeth. And I can't remember. Did Hogan have Elizabeth on his shoulders or something like that? There's a little like, bit of stuff like. Yeah. Yeah. Pl- little planted seeds there as that would foreshadow the uh, the turn with Savage later, you know, in the beginning of 89, um, leading into WrestleMania 5. So the, it was an angle that they had kind of probably you know sort of played out over the course of a year um or drawn up the the key points to it and um you know so that was kind of where this the whole point of this i guess was to kind of show them as a 
as friends in an unstoppable team, but then there's, there's slowly 